All right, Kokomi, the mermaid with legs. Her damage isn't swish, but with some resin squish, maybe she'll grant your wish. So stop dissing my fish, you f***ing bitch. So I played Kokomi for a little bit, and I won't lie, she's not the best. But last time I checked, I made Ning Guang, so I don't really give a f because I think every character is viable if you use them right. But I do want to state that Kokomi's kit is a bit, like, unbalanced in terms of, like, you know, everything. So, uh, let's continue with the video. Alright, starting with her elemental abilities. Elemental skill, squirting jellyfish. Kokomi summons a jellyfish that squirts water out of its body in a hydro damage AoE. Ugh. Anyways, every time it deals damage, this heals your on-field character based on her maximum HP. Elemental Burst, Mermaid Mode, Kokomi's auto attack damage and her squirting jellyfish deals increased damage based on her maximum HP. Her auto attacks will now heal her entire team as well. Also, this increases her interruption resistance and lets her walk on water. So basically, she goes from to Alright, story time. So as a divine priestess of the Watatsumi Island, Kokomi's job is to defend the land and its people, and they love her. But apparently in the past, some boomers were concerned about Kokomi's overly young age when she became the divine priestess. So they were like, hey yo, let's go do some plotting and keep asking dumbass questions. But what they didn't know was that Kokomi had big brain, and these NPCs had small brain. So when these NPCs with small brain were causing problems, Kokomi's big brain put these small brains to their places and brought peace and order. Unfortunately, Big Brain was smoking Naku weeds and thought minus 100% crit rate was a good trade for 25% healing bonus. Moving on to passive talents. Passive 1. When Kokomi's pervert jellyfish is on the field when she activates mermaid mode, she resets the duration of the pervert jellyfish's on-field time. Ugh. Passive 2. Kokomi's auto attack damage during mermaid mode is further increased based on 15% of her healing bonus. Passive 3. Kokomi decreases swimming stamina consumption by 20%. Wow. Passive 4. Everyone's disappointment. Kokomi loses all of her crit rate for a 25% healing bonus. I like how this passive talent's called Flawless Strategy. <laughs> Moving on to Constellations. Constellation 1, Kokomi's final auto attack unleashes a swimming fish, because, you know, we didn't know fish could swim, that deals 30% of her maximum HP. Unfortunately, this fish isn't part of Kokomi's auto attack. Constellation 2, Kokomi gains healing bonus based on the number of characters with their HP lower than 50%, which is oddly specific. Constellation 3, your mermaid mode is now whale mode. Get it? Because you spent that much to get here? Constellation 4. Kokomi's auto attack speed is increased by 10% and every hit regenerates 0.8 energy every hit. Constellation 5. Jellyfish will now pump a load. <laughs> Constellation 6. Kokomi's auto attack deals 40% extra hydro damage for 4 seconds when your auto attack heals a character with more than 80% HP. Wow, that's rough. Moving on to artifacts. Yeah, my brain was literally loading for a straight hour trying to figure out how to build her. Cause see, Kokomi's kit is like a mix between Mona's E without the taunt and then Child's auto attack and then Barbara. And since all three of these characters are built differently, what the f am I supposed to do when you fuse them all together? Her kit was pretty confusing as well. Her ascension stats, hydro damage bonus, and her burst also buffs her auto attack damage while healing. She has a minus 100% crit rate, and I'm tilted cause this kind of limits her potential. So hopefully she gets buffed. I doubt it though. For beginners, I would go for Exile's four piece set. I guess you can go with the Merger Artist. But I don't think you'll do enough damage in the beginning anyways, but you can go with the two piece of both if you want. For endgame artifacts, I won't lie to you, I expected a little more from Kokomi, but I decided to use the four piece hard debt because I like her design. She's the first hydro unit in about 10 months after Child was released, but I made Ning Guang, so I'm fine with Kokomi. Her damage is pretty underwhelming. Wait, hold up. Oh. 
but I'm okay. But there are other options like 4-piece Maidens and 4-piece Tenacity because they both help with heals and buffs, so I would recommend that more for her utility. For primary stats, you do want to focus on HP percentage for Sands, Hydro Damage bonus for Goblet, and a Healing bonus for Circlet. HP percentage is pretty valuable, but when you do use Kokomi, Healing bonus is very valuable for her kit as well, as her healing is underwhelming without it, and it helps with her damage too anyways. For sub stats, you do want to go for HP percentage and Energy Recharge, then you can go for Elemental Mastery and it should be fine. Thankfully, Kokomi is probably one of the easiest characters to build. Alright, story time. So in the past, people of the Watatsumi Island lived at the bottom of the sea at a place called Ankanomia. They were trapped and abandoned by this thing called Dragon Air of the Depths. Then out of nowhere, this giant snake named Orobashi cocked him and pulled these people out of the water and made an island by ripping off the coral on its body. Then it taught them how to farm and smelt, so that's why these people serve the snake god, and the bloodline that continues to serve this god is the Sangonomia clan. And the current heir of this clan is Kokomi. Unfortunately, her god was slain, so I serve Booba. Moving on to weapons, starting with 5 stars, Everlasting Moonglow, HP percentage and ability just helps her utility. It's honestly the best choice, and I would highly recommend running this if you have it, but only if you have it. Just because you have Kokomi doesn't necessarily mean you need this. Moving on to 4 stars, Prototype Amber. I would just recommend this if you want to save your Primo Gems. It's just a free to play weapon, and it's really great. Then, lastly, we have the three star Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers. This actually works, and if you've played this game for a while, you should probably have this. The ability for this weapon is just so helpful, and the HP percentage definitely helps as well. You can also go for EM weapons if you want, but Elemental Mastery works depending on the one ending the reactions, and since we're not all perfect, I would just recommend HP percentage. Now for teams, Kokomi is a selfish healer. Personally, I think Energy Recharge is kind of a problem for her, so normally I would get Hydro Resonance, but Sing Chu is more fit for selfish DPS teams. Barbara doesn't collect enough energy for her, and Child is selfish too. So that leaves Miss Boote Cheeks, but she's a five star, and it's not like everyone has her too. Which is why I would recommend running Electro Resonance comps for energy, specifically Beidou. This doesn't necessarily mean I'm telling you to build Elemental Mastery on either of these units. Her autos technically should do more damage than Electro Charge. So if you add Kokomi's 5,000 dish normal attack damage on top of Beidou's burst damage plus the Electro Charge as a bonus, it should be manageable. Then use someone like Fischl or Sara for Resonance and use Sucrose or Kaza to increase your elemental damage. Some of you might say, why don't I just use Xing Chu? Well, one, I don't f***ing know, I'm just trying to help, goddamn. Well, one, Kokomi can heal your team more efficiently than Xing Chu, and aside from Xing Chu, you have no healer. Pretend she's not there. You can also use freeze comps if you want, but I would recommend Xing Chu or Mona for that, because most of the crowd DPS units are selfish, meaning that they need to be on the field more often, and unfortunately, so does Kokomi. Shang Ling and Kokomi is pretty useful as well, since you can proc Hydra pretty often with a Kokomi, since all you have to do is auto attack, but it's up to you whether you want to use Kokomi or Xing Chu for this job. So how the do you play Kokomi? Well, she's pretty simple. She's a selfish character that can heal both ways for the character on field and the team. So for tips, number one, just a heads up again because I was confused about this too, Kokomi's passive doesn't reset her skill cooldown. It resets the duration of how long the pervert jellyfish stays on the field. So that means you can potentially keep the jellyfish with you until its cooldown resets because it's 20 seconds, but if you're using the four piece heart of depth, then ignore this. Number two, you can cancel Kokomi's auto attack with a charge attack like Mingguang, which is technically more damage, but remember, Remember, unlike Barbara, Kokomi's charge attack heals the same as her normal attack, which leads to number 3. Kokomi's auto attack consists of 3 combos, and there's a pause between the second and the third one. So if you want to heal your team as quickly as possible, I recommend pressing shift after your second attack and repeat. I really like Kokomi's entire design, and I'm not annoyed that she's a catalyst, but I do want to say her kit seems a little bit underwhelming for me, but if you guys enjoy playing her, I guess go for it, but if you're wondering if she's the best healer, my answer would be probably not. In my personal opinion, if Kokomi didn't have this passive, she would have been a perfect character. But that's it for the video, guys. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more Genshin Impact content. Other than that, guys, hopefully, you guys have an amazing day. Bye bye. No, 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 no. Why can't Kokomi crit? Like, why? Why can't she crit? Why can't she crit? Like, why? Why'd you take that away? Like, dude, who asked for 25% healing bonus? Who the, who the f asked? Why can't we have crit rate? Why the f they should. What the f why did they take why the f did they take crit right away? It's such what like bro, everyone thought that there was gonna be another multiplier? But there isn't. It's just like why? Why would you take crit rate? What the that's like cutting my d off and just running away. Like why would you do that to Kuhali, bro? Why would you take that away?